Right now, we're going to bring our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, on. We're going to be talking markets. And, of course, don't forget, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You hit that opening call. It's right on your left-hand side. And you, you hit subscribe. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So you can come over, take your choice, you try it out. It, you know, 30 days later, if it doesn't work for you for some reason, guess what? You get your money back. Let's get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. What's going on, Basil? Hi, Tom. What's going on is I think we're actually stepping into summer for the first time. That's a, I heard it's going to be, well, it's, it's going to be hot up there this weekend, I guess, huh? I hope so, yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. Totally. Uh, we, des we deserve it, yeah. <laughs> you, you definitely do, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's take a look at this market, Basil. So, last time we spoke, last Tuesday, I was saying to you that I think I'm getting ready. I, we've built up a, for subscribers to my opening call. We built up a big cash position, one of the biggest cash positions we've had in a long time. And that we'll probably start putting money to work very soon. Well, on the Thursday low, when the Dow went to 31,222 on the 12th, the candle that was formed, and I discussed this with you, I told you that in my work I like to draw trend lines and arches, but there was a particular uh, two trend lines making a little mini channel that was coming down Price had held that all the way through, um, but that's what I call the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. If it holds as support, it could be a nice turnaround uh, area. So it went just below but closed within it, and um, I thought this is perfect. So on the on the early pullback on Friday morning, I we, we went long. So um, went long the Dow. We have a core position going back to the low of 2020, um, but uh, <clears throat> basically this is this is a new position, a shorter term position. And at the same time, I like very much, even though if I'd listened to the news, I would never have done it. But I did my analysis and I see, you know, the QQQ, the index 100, has done exactly the same thing. Here's this trend line coming down. The price went right inside. The MACD looked like the histogram was starting to improve in the daily chart. Stochastic was not nearly as bad as it was earlier in April. And I thought that there was a chance that this was a positive divergence that could produce some results. But it needed to do certain things before I was guaranteed anything. So on uh, there again, we, we, went, we went long. We went long, actually, um, a little more aggressively in the QQQs. And so far, it's working out well. But for this to be, and we also, we've got some very uh, low price stocks. I like to have a mix for subscribers of, uh, you know, maybe double or triple digit stocks. But I also like to put in single digits because if it's in the right sector and things are working out well, they can very nicely move uh, at the same time. So in this particular instance, I just wanted to say that in the QQQ index 100 trading vehicle, <clears throat> there's been a nice move up today. This is leg B. The MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. That means the histogram is good. But I, I would prefer if it suddenly crossed positive, it'll be the first time since it crossed negative way back the 7th of April when the price of the QQQs were at the 200 period moving average up in the 358, 360 area. So this is a big pullback that we've had. I don't think this is the low, but I think it's, at this point, I'm treating it as an acceptable low that we could use as a trade. But to really get a confirmation, I need to see it's at 306.36 right now. The QQQ needs to trade. It needs to close a couple of times over the 14 period moving average, which is at this particular point is at 308.15. So it's got a bit of a way to go. And I would also like not this leg B to turn into a peak D and such a small move. I like this this leg B. I like when leg Bs are very strong. So that's it's almost the same thing for the Dow. The Dow right now is in leg A. I like the takeoff to be very strong. A or B needs to really get a good, a good percentage move off the low. So this is a nice starter position in terms of a turnaround. 
the weekly chart says yes, the Dow held in the same this uh, a much longer term inside track propellant zone. So this is nice, but the technicals need a lot of work, and the QQQ went right through. So this is all I'm doing now is trying to treat these as trades. But there are times where if you get it right, it gives you some comfort because as the market whipsaws trying to get some traction to the upside, you've got good support. So I like I like the positions that we've got right now. I also prefer that if we can get turnaround areas either at the top or the bottom, very close to the actual turning point, it just gives you a nice cushion because as prices start to rally, if it's from the bottom up, it means that every time there's some kind of a whipsaw, in other words, if we make a peak and there's a pullback before you get to leg C, if you're in comfortably just off the lows, it means you've got a, a bit of a cushion there because the price shouldn't go back to your entry point. If it does, that's usually a big negative, so it's, it's a good thing to get out. So I'll raise the stop as we move higher. <clears throat> and at the same time, uh, looking at the different, you know, I'd spoken to you for, for a long time now that we've got the DB agricultural um, food. This is the agricultural sector ETF. Yeah, the DBA, uh, right. Yeah. The DBA, DB Agriculture Fund. And uh, it ran up, we were in the 13.77 for a long time now. It pulled back from 22.88 down to 21.27. But you and I have been talking about for ages that when the Fed keeps talking about inflation, inflation, and both of us said, when the Fed suddenly realized that inflation's out, when the genie's out the box, it's really hard to put it back in. And I think we start starting to see that. I mean, look what happened to wheat. Uh, this is wheat is in this uh, agricultural fund. Look at this. This is wheat breaking out. It had the spectacular move. Remember, it went up into a and a half on the eighth of uh, uh, March. I discussed this Roman candle. I gave a whole. Uh, analysis of what happens in the Chapman Wave, a, a Roman candle, if it goes halfway into the wick, look out, can pull back sharply, will it plunge from 1363 down to around about 1,000, and I think it was just about 1,080, or maybe a little lower, yes, about 1,010, and now saw another move, and it's back at 1279. <clears throat> so this is part of that, this is the thing with, with, with the grains. Uh, it's very difficult to, to produce them. You have a certain time, and if it doesn't get done in that particular time, that, that could lead to shortages. So I, I think that the agricultural sector is saying that uh, got to be careful. Uh, this is uh, something not to ignore. It's going to impact grocery products, uh, just a lot of things. Yeah, no, there's, there's no doubt, man. I mean... Uh... Well, you get, I believe, that like either three, uh, one half of the wheat production, you know, Ukraine is a monster wheat producer. It's, it's huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. it's not just great. I mean, it's all the grains. It's, it's a lot of things. Yeah. And I don't know, even if, let's just say they start to get production back again. Well, I, this is the summer. How are they going to get it to port? How are they going to ship it? I yeah, mean, this, and what's happening is, in the U.S., the bottom line is that, unfortunately, folks, it's, it's whacked out this year. Where the wheat is being planted, there's a drought, so they're not going to get anything. And then where uh, the beans are being planted, there's too much water. So there's, there's trouble in paradise out here. Folks, you can get Basil's newsletter, but come over to our website at TFNN. Hit those newsletters and get that opening call. Thanks, Basil. Thank you, Tom.